Proverbs chapter 3. I want to tell you something about the Bible. It's alive. It's very alive. It's breathing. I remember one time I was going door knocking, witnessing. I remember we were walking up this house in Ledger where we were at. There's this long driveway. I had to walk down the driveway, and had to cut across and go up the front stairs. I remember as we were walking up, I mean, the, the people you could hear was scattering throughout the whole house. And the reason why is they saw the Bible. And the Lord's taking care of me. December 11th, my wife died, 2019. December 2019, I started with an ear infection. That's still in the process of healing, but all the surgeries have been done and done successful. Then I got an infection on my toe. That's starting to look good. And then I get word from my doctor today that my blood work shows I have problems with my kidneys now. And I gotta go see the kidney doctor. What I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm a diabetic. I have not done well eating. It's not all God and not all the devil. Galatians 6, 7, I can only pray to the Lord. He's going to show me mercy and grace through this. But I know also it is the devil because I'm active serving the Lord. And saved and lost people's lives are being changed. As we look at Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2, when I finally got home and I said, okay, I got to do the Bible, I got to do tonight's study. I don't know if God's speaking to me. He has. And he has used his word. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. That's a kind of interesting verse to be reading today when there's possibility, you know, my body is seriously damaged. I'm not under the law. And the commandments I'm told to do is love God and love, love my neighbors and love the brother. I'm saved, born again, outside of any work. Not of works, least any man boasts, for by grace are you saved through faith. But, you know, if I look at the law and I look at the commandments, it'd be perfectly well after my salvation of April 25th, 1986. It'd be very perfectly well for me to still honor my parents. It's not going to save me. It'd be perfectly well if I didn't commit adultery. It'd be perfectly well if I didn't have a false witness. I just thought verse 2 just really... And there's countless times in my life weekly that something has happened and God verifies it back with the scriptures or with the preacher. Again, I said, my son, verse 1. That's Solomon writing to his son. But what if that would be God speaking to us since we're his children? Now he says, my law, God has a law. The wages of sin is death. Oh, I'm for my grace, you say. Not a works, uh, not the law. Yeah, but the wages of sin is death is written to Christians. God has a law. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. God has a law. There's wood, hay, and stubble for those that are losers. And everything they do, losing in their lifetime. 
And God has a law. There's gold, silver, and precious stones. Everything and anything done for Jesus Christ alone. A father has a law. Worldwide, especially now in America, because when you see these pictures of Chicago and New York City and Atlanta and Portland, when you watch those video things and you think, you know, what are you, in South America? Am I in the Middle East? All these youth are uprising. That didn't happen in America. And it's happened in America because parenting has failed in America, because America has left God, Jesus Christ, and the Bible. And we're going to read about a moment, hopefully tonight, about God chastising. A father is to have a law in his house. Garbage. Clean. Be home. Get your schoolwork done. Better clean your room. There's got to be laws of a father. Today, we have many children who don't even know, have an idea who their father is. God has a law even for Christians. As I said, the, soul, the law of sowing and reaping. And commandments. Let thy heart keep my commandments. All right, that's Solomon talking to his son. Hey, I command you to do that. What did I tell you to do? And then there are commandments in the Old Testament and there are commandments in the New Testament. Under the church age, John tells us about commandments. Not for salvation. But live a productive life as for a Christian. Don't you say it because I'm a Christian. I don't have to honor my parents. The Pharisees were, were having the, the Jewish people do that. I'll just give us money. We'll hold it for you. And you know, say, you know, it was a gift. To the, it was a gift to the church. It was a gift to the temple. The length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. What is the day? The law and the commandment. And as far as verse 1 and 2, as far as an earthly father, most cases an earthly father will give their child good advice that would keep them living longer. Don't take anybody else's medication. Drive the speed limit. And other such things that a father put forth for the safety of their children. Don't play with guns. And yet, if a Christian does not obey God, and such as, as the Lord's Supper is an example, there's sickness, there's even death when you don't obey God. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. You can get cruel with somebody. You can get so hot headed, so angry with somebody, and you won't let mercy. I'll do unto they as they did unto me. That's not mercy. And truth. Man, these people listening to the media today, you've forsaken truth. And God has given us. Two great words to remind you about the media, and the, and the great words would be with fake news. And even the President of the United States has called it out as fake news. Still, you wake up in the morning, boom, you turn on that, that news channel. You pick up that newspaper, and you believe every word of it. But when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the Christ and His words, Bind them ab about thy neck, like a tie, a necklace. I've got my tie on, do I look good? But do you got mercy and truth? 
Listen, don't get me with Italian soup. All right, there's 25 places in Daytona Beach alone. I can go in there and I can find a soup. I can get a soup for five bucks. I can put that suit on. I can put that shirt on. I can put that tie on. I can shine up my shoes. I can get some proper colored socks and, and be as wicked as a devil. And we know those occupations. Used car salesmen and politicians, and they dress in suits. What is the character? Because mercy and truth. Are you being truthful? I know men in the pulpit. I don't trust them. I don't have their character because they lie. One lie destroys your character. And we're all liars. We all got to destroy character. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Now we would say a tablet. And I don't mean a computer tab. You used, to, you used to go to the store and you get a little little pad of paper. Some that had lines, some of it didn't have lines. And you would write on it. That's exactly what Moses wrote on. He wrote on the table. With the finger of God. Write it where again? Write it in your heart inside. Not your head. Not your notebook. Write it on your heart. Write them. Mercy and truth. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So having mercy, mercy and truth will get you favor, approval, and good understanding. And understanding remembers your relationship to God. In the sight of God and man. Look at 1 Samuel 2. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on, and there was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Now I'll leave you to go study the life of Samuel on your own. Samuel is the perfect example. That's what the Bible said. So you want understanding. You want to be approved by God. You got to show mercy and you got to have truth. You got to have the law and you have commandments. Now, don't get me interrupted by the law and commandments. Salvation. I'm not talking salvation. Don't you dare say, Stalin says the law and commandment. Salvation. Don't you dare say that. I'm talking about for the Christian after. You can have all the mercy and truth and never believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and still end up in hell. I'm talking about, and I'm taking what, what Solomon's writing for, the, for a Christian application after we're saved. Because when you look at the law, you look at the commandments, you look at mercy, you look at truth, that's all what Jesus Christ was. And are we not supposed to be like Christ? So if we're supposed to be like Christ, would you see Christ sitting down at a table playing board games? I told him, no. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding, not just understand, good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy, got it again, heart. I'll trust God with, with my Sunday morning. I'll trust God with the change I got left over in the end of the week. 
I'll just think about God. No, you got to think about God in your heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. It's not about what you think. It's what God says. Many Christians, I like it. I like it has been the road that, that gets many people into hell. I like it is the road and avenue that gets you to wood, hay, and stubble. What's the Bible say about it? Do you even open the Bible? Oh, I know why people don't open it. I know why Christians don't open their Bible. Because when you go reading through the Bible, God's going to show you who you are. And I know for a fact this because I read my Bible all the way through. I study my Bible and the Bible, hey, that's what you are. What am I? I'm a dead dog, loser, sinner. I can't amount to nothing but Jesus Christ gets me to glory. I don't want to read about that guy because that guy did the same sins I do. I want to pass on that guy. I'll, I'll move first. I don't read that book. It's boring. Maybe you don't read that book because your sins are in that book. Whoa. You know, I, I really think God's going to bless me through this thing. I really do. I think there are unsaved people, and I think there are Christians out there praying that I drop dead. I lost another friend today because they're putting these, these these pictures and words up on their thing, and I addressed two of them with the scriptures. And bye. You know, not even three. I'm going to say not even three months. I've had two Christians get mad at me. Because I'm trying to help them grow. What what were they doing? They're leaning to their understanding. Well, I like it. But what does the Bible say? I hate you. <laughs> That's not what the Bible says. That's what they say. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. That's hard. Was uh, it First Thessalonians? I always get First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, Thessalonians. Where is it? It may not be. Um, First Thessalonians five. Well, verse eighteen. That's not the verse I'm looking for. But in everything, give thanks. Now, I may be wrong, but isn't there somewhere in the Bible where Paul says we're supposed to, you know, I mean, not maybe rejoice, but, you know, infirmities, you know, problems. In everything, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. You got a bad kidney. Okay, Lord. I got to rejoice. I know what bad kidney can do to my both my wives had kidney kidney failures and dialysis, and after that, they died. How do I acknowledge God? God's the only one that can take care of it. God made the kidney. You go down the road, and some drunk hits your car, and your car is damaged. Now you got medical problems, and you, there's no sense in suing them because they ain't got no money. Rejoice evermore, Paul says. That's hard. When you get a Christian, well, they say Christian, and they just bawl you out, they hate you, they give you a hard time. What's it say? It's in all thy ways acknowledge him. We talked about street preaching the other night. When they cuss you out and they yell at you, they get you in your face. Well, Lord, I thank you very much that you told me that's what they're going to do. That's what gets, that's what prevents me from getting angry many times on the street ministry. When every month I was like, you know what? God, you told me it was going to happen. You 
you said it was going to happen. One person came out one time, he got angry because, because you know, one guy got out of the car and was going to, read your Bible. They already said they're going to do that. You mean they said they were going to get out of, no, out of the car? You mean would they use physical for, force on you? They stoned Stephen. They crucified Jesus. They stoned uh, Paul. Paul was, was doing things wicked and evil for them to enchant against Jesus. He was putting him in prison. He was killing him. All the apostles died a valiant death. What got them through it? Jesus said, marvel not. Know that the world hated me first before it hates you. And when we got to give all the ways acknowledge him, the scripture tells us what's going to happen in life. You walk the way of godly, the world's going to hate you. And you're, it's not a promise, it's not fruitful, it's not garden, it's not prosperity. And if you walk the ways of the world, it's going to look lovely, it's going to look great, it's going to look grand, it's going to be quote-unquote terrific until the eternal life. And he, God, shall direct thy path. Acknowledges God. Again, I said in my Bible, many pages I had, always give God the glory, repent when I do not. Maybe my toe infection was for me to get this blood work so we can start doing something with my kidney. I don't know. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Look at me. Look how great I am. Look at the wisdom. Look at pride. Look at Fear the Lord. Self-righteousness is not fearing the Lord. And depart from evil. When you think you're the great I am, you're not fearing God and you're walking in evil and God says, repent. I don't definitely, I know a preacher definitely like that right now I'm thinking about. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to your bones. Bones that marrow makes the white blood cells. It's part of your blood. America has no fear and it's reckless and it's proud. Honor the Lord with thy substance. What you have. It doesn't just say money. It's substance. Whatever you got, it's substance substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase all right let's play on nine and ten for a little bit the Bible says you're the tithe see that verse right there that map almost matches Malachi Honor the Lord with thy first with thy substance and with the first fruits of thy increase. That means when you grow a garden, you bring your first tomatoes, your first cucumbers, out of your paycheck gets the first of you know, of the tithing, and then any extra after that. Listen, I, I tithe so I can talk and I give above the tithe. So I can talk. But firstly, Pastor, you got a box. Hey, Give it to, I'll give it to the church. What's in the box? Oh, my dog just had puppies. Both our dogs had puppies. We got 20 of them. Now two of them are yours. That's the first group. Right? You do know that Israel had a staff and a rod. And they would have the sheep walk through a little narrow way, and they would count the sheep. And every tenth sheep, they would pick that sheep up and put it off the side. That was part of the time. What's in the bowl, Sonny? Uh, I'm supposed to give my thing. My goldfish, had, my, my fish had babies, and he had a whole bunch of babies. So I, I brought the babies to church.
It said substance. It didn't tell you what substance. Now, if you if the churches really believe that some of the stuff that you do, you think the church would accept? I know people right now who who have dogs and they make extra money, if not a living, on dogs. Okay, every tenth dog goes to the church. I know one pastor particularly hates dogs. That would absolutely make him angry. And yet the law says you can't trade a good for a bad. Let's get, go back to the law now. Let's read more. So shall thy barns, that's the first time barn, barn shows up, be filled with plenty. All right, let's put that onto a prosperity Christian church. I don't have a barn. How is God going to fill something I don't have? You know why Israel has barns? Because they were husbandmen. Because they were herders. They were shepherds. And they grew olive trees. And they grew grapes. They didn't build skyscrapers. They didn't operate subways. They didn't have a transit bus. They didn't have casinos. With plenty. And thy presses. Thy presses. It's fresh. Shall burst out with new wine. I give the Lord my substance. He's going to give me grapes and I'm going to make wine. Do you know what many Christians will do with that wine? They would let it ferment. And then they would probably give that. You know, look at this wine. I, I, it's fermented now. Here you go, Pastor. Got 100 bottles. Here's 10 for you. Oh, I can't. Oh, yeah. You know, a pastor should not be giving, giving into wine. Oh, the deacons, they have a little, and we'll give it to them. Just don't hate me for what the Bible says, because what I've said about the Bible, you have changed, so you can make the Bible do what you want it to do. Now, don't dare get mad at me, because if I am preaching the truth, and I am teaching from the Bible... And you are persecuting me and hating me and despising me. Jesus said to Paul, why persecute thou me? Let me tell you something else about verse 10. The press. That's not the press and newspapers. And new wine. You need to look up information. I'll have you leave it to yourself. The Gutenberg Press. The first mechanically printing of the Bible. I'll leave it to yourself. That verse right there. The, Gutten, the Gutenberg, I can't really say his name right, I follow it. The Gutenberg Press. G U T T. Or the Gutenberg Bible. And that verse there. I'm going to leave it to you to do yourself. Most of you are watching this on a computer, some kind of thing. You can go run over to Google real quick and say, Gutenberg and, uh, Press. Gutenberg Bible. Do, do Gutenberg as, as close as you can do it. Press and then Bible. It'll come up. Should come up. My son. Okay. Now let's take this as God. I don't think I'm wrong. But let's look at God first. This one. My son. I keep losing my place. Despise not the chasing of the Lord. Oh. That is against every education and every children development and every sociologist and every psychologist and every person of the world of America today, you don't spank your child. Dr. Spook said, give every child a, a kiss before they go to bed. 
And I think I've been told, and I never looked it up, but I have been told that Dr. Spook's own children sued him. You know why there's children running around rampant in Portland, Oregon? Because they said, God, we don't want you. They said, God, we don't want Jesus. God, we don't want the Bible. The Bible says, correct thy child. No, we'll give them a time out. Going to count to four, you're going to knock it off. One, two, two and an eighth, two and three eighths. <laughs> I just get it. We'll get it. The Bible says, chastening the rod. And work. this is the first time Solomon brings this up, and it's going to come forth many times in the Proverbs. So when your little darling Christian child grows up and they are of the world and they are a terror to you and they are a, a, a shameful to you, we will read in Proverbs because you didn't take care of that child right. Don't you blame the schools. Don't you blame the colleges. Don't you blame the pastor. Pastor only gets some three, maybe four hours a week if he's lucky. If you're a typical Christian, he only gets the, the kid two hours a week. It is your job as the father and your job as the mother to raise those kids. The public school system only came up for the devil to use. And yet the public school system in Massachusetts was started to teach kids how to read their Bible. Boy, did we come the wrong way in the wrong way. Which defies evolution. So God chasing of the Lord. And then Solomon telling Rehoboam, hey, you know what? God's going to chasten you when you do wrong. And God does. The entire nation is split into two. Neither be weary of this correction. Now, if God's chasing you, and it's God's correction, God ain't doing it to to put his thumb down on you and nail you down to the ground. And he ain't doing it to, to, to destroy you. He's doing it to help you. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. If you don't correct your child, the Bible says you don't love your child. According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5, there are three ways to, to reaction to chastisement. You can despise it, you can faint over it, on it, or you can have patience and learn from it. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. A father corrects his child and he gets delight. Not correcting the child, the child turns out halfway decent. And we'll see that more and more as we go further, heading to Proverbs 31. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it, wisdom and understanding put together, is better than the merchandise of silver. Now, we read earlier on chapter 2 about seeking. I don't see it, but we did it last night. Searching and seeking. And the gain thereof, find gold. You know, what, you know what the problem with people do with wisdom and understanding and why they don't have happiness? They go after wisdom and understanding to get more gold and more silver. Career. We're not talking about career in the book of Proverbs. We're talking about with your relationship with God. You get things right with God and God gets things right with you. No matter what kind of job you have.
And notice it says wisdom and understanding the merchandise of it. Wisdom and understanding produces merchandise. You can make a living of wisdom and understanding in God. She, wisdom and understanding, but usually wisdom, is more precious than ruby. That's the most valuable gem in the Bible. A virtuous woman is, is far better than a ruby. And all the things thou canst desire are not compared to her. Anything you want can't compare to wisdom. Because without wisdom, you're not going to know how to use what you got, the knowledge. And without the understanding, you're not going to know the relationship to God. Remember, the devil don't have understanding. Length of days in her right hand, I think a hand, let me turn my feet, yep. So there's another length in life. Wisdom can get you life where you live longer. You don't do stupid things. I'll tell you the number one stupid thing today. Pop on the chart. And I see all ages doing it. I see all uh, races doing it. I see both male and female doing it. You just step out in the middle of the road and just start crossing without looking. That is dumb. You know, when I was a child, if I didn't look both ways and my mom caught me crossing the road without looking both ways, my butt was red. My mom drove out the stupidity. Well, they'll stop for you. Well, some of the morons are out there today. I wouldn't have much faith in the person behind that wheel. Many, too many in Florida will just go right through a red light. And in her left hand, riches and honor. So in her right hand is life. Her left hand is riches and honor. That left hand is the weakest hand. Riches and honor are the weakest thing, but life. I mean... In all reality, for a Christian, God can't use a dead Christian. I mean, we go to glory and praise the Lord, but when a Christian serves the Lord and, and he goes home to be with the Lord, it, I don't know how to say it, but I mean, God lost somebody who's good. Her ways, wisdom, her ways are ways of ple ple yeah, pleasantness. And all her paths are peace. Not some of her paths, all her paths. She's a tree of life. We know what the other tree was. To them that lay hold upon her. What gives a person life today? Jesus Christ. What is Jesus Christ? He's the tree of life. And happy, hear that word again, is everyone that retaineth her wisdom. And it says retaineth her, which gives an implication is you can lose your wisdom. Wisdom, once you got, has to be kept or you can lose it. Wisdom is not guaranteed. The Lord, by wisdom, okay, we're going to give you an illustration of what wisdom is, has founded the earth and understanding, he established the heavens. Wisdom and understanding were there in Genesis 1 when God created. Evolutionists don't have the wisdom and understanding and the knowledge of verse 20 because they have no idea that God did it. 
So you see, by rejecting God and creation, all right, they lost wisdom, they lost understanding, and they lost the knowledge. We haven't looked at verse 20 yet. An atheist does not have wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and he could fix the greatest airplane machines ever. He can go find out and dig up the, the biggest and fattest diamonds inside the earth. He can circumnavigate around the, around the equator and, and north to south. And if he doesn't have God's wisdom, he does not have God's knowledge, he does not have God's understanding, you're just a fool. By his God's knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. So everyone you go out there, you see that dew is out in the plants. Go, go ask your professor and your science, your, your science teachers. I saw the dew this morning and the, and the plants. Where did that come from? Well, you know, the, the clouds and the things and the... the, the Preacher, where does the dew come from? The knowledge of God. How hard is that? I, like I said, I think when we get to glory, I think a lot of things that science has tried to prove is going to be proven wrong. Wouldn't it be funny, and I, I'm just, you can throw this in the garbage can. Wouldn't it be funny if gravity is God taking his hand to stay right there? Don't you go floating off. Well, how do you explain this? The astronauts that devil's like, God, God, take your hand away and they'll curse you to your face. Are you against the space program? That's not where man belongs. Our domain goes as far as the eagles. That universe out there that belongs to the devil, principalities, and powers has nothing to do with, with us. How about a weatherman would say, okay, we got clouds, we got a jet from here. The Lord, hopefully if we pray, we need rain in this area. Hopefully the Lord will have this arrow come this way and bring what he does to bring us rain so our crops would be And may God move away the, the tornado that is expected to do, do tonight. May God just make it so the atmosphere don't produce tomato, uh, tomatoes, tornadoes. You ain't going to see them give any God credit at all or even seeking God. And then you're going to turn around and say, God bless America. Why does, why does everybody come up and say afterward? A hurricane after a turn pray for the people of this how come you don't say that before because God's not on your mind 